Hi guys, it's Nev here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the SNAV. Or to put it more broadly, I'm going to show you how to read the map. Now to get the SNAV, you need to find this corridor here, and you need the level 1 keycard. Make sure you blink before you go in. Straight through, and then you'll get the SNAV here, and the level 2 keycard here. When you pick up the SNAV, you'll get the SNAV 300. And as you can see, the database is offline. And as you move around, it will populate the map as you go. It's also very low on battery, so it will die very quickly. So at this stage of the game, it's best to just completely ignore it. And then you want to head to 914. So once you get to 914, there are two possible upgrades for the SNAV. So if you come in here and drop it on the floor and then put 914 onto fine this will give you the SNAV 310 navigator and for this you do not need batteries anymore it will be permanently powered and it will completely fill in the entire map so you can see exactly where you need to go but you can also upgrade it again And if you put it onto very fine, that will give you the SNAV Ultimate. And again, you do not require any batteries to use this. It will auto fill in the entire map, but it will also show you the proximity of various SCPs. So if I go find an SCP. So as you can see, 173 is now showing on the map and he is somewhere within that red circle. And as you get closer to him, the circle will get smaller, and as you get further away, the circle will get bigger. So he's going to spawn in the middle of this corridor. And then possibly again in this corridor. And as I get further away, the circle starts to get bigger. Okay, so now we come to the PowerPoint presentation part of the video, because I want to talk a little bit about the map layout and how you can interpret what you're seeing on the SNAV. Now this is a fairly typical map layout that you will get in SCP Containment Breach. And I'll include the map seed in the description in case anybody wants to play this particular map. Now it may seem a bit confusing, but honestly once you break it down it's really quite simple. So this is how it looks overall, but when you break it down into light, heavy and entrance zone it becomes a lot easier to navigate. Now this blue section here is light containment and you've got the start room down the bottom here in the middle. And then where the blue meets the white, those are the lockdown doors between light and heavy. And then this red section here is heavy containment. And again, where the red meets the white is where you go through to entrance zone. And then the green section at the top is entrance zone. So the way you want to think of the map layout in general is that light containment is essentially two long parallel corridors that are connected by these shorter corridors. And then same again for heavy, it's two long parallel corridors connected by these shorter corridors. And then for entrance zone, every now and then entrance zone will have a really random layout, but more often than not it will just be this one long corridor with shorter corridors coming off the top like this. So once you start the game you'll start here and as I've said in previous videos you'll want to head right straight away because at this section of the map is where you're most likely to find the level 1 and 2 key cards. And you can see there's also these dead ends in light containment and these are rooms that you want to go and check out because they might be important. So one of these will be 914, one of them will be 372's containment chamber, one of them will be 205 and one of them will be a storage room. 
Now when you go from light to heavy, or from heavy to entrance, you'll sometimes get these little rooms here. And they're just like one block high, and they are dead ends. There is absolutely no reason to go check them out. They are nothing important. However, if you see one like this, where it's like two sections of corridor high, you definitely want to go check it out, because it could be something important. Now once you're through into heavy containment, these dead end rooms are the ones that you want to head for. You'll also need to find 049's chamber, which will be in any random straight bit of corridor, but these dead end rooms are more often than not going to be something that you're going to want to check out. So they will be 106's chamber, 079's, 008, 035 and 895. So you'll want to go around heavy containment, prioritising getting to these rooms so you can see what they are. So as I've said before, you always want to go into entrance zone on the right hand side. You want to be going up this corridor here. Because you're looking for the corner corridor. And that will be where the security room is. Now, in this example that I've given here, there is also a corner on this side of the map as well. And sometimes the security room will be on this side, but it's definitely best to check on the right hand side first. If you get a map that has two corner points like this, the other one that will be on the left hand side is the room that 096 will sometimes spawn at. If you do not trigger 096's event in heavy containment in the server room, he will be in this corner here. So make sure if you do have to go through this way on the left hand side, make sure to be very careful when you go through this corner room here because he will be in there sitting in the middle of the room. Again, when you're ready to leave, and you're about to head to either gate A or B, you want to ignore these smaller dead end rooms, you want to head for the ones that are bigger like this. So both gate A and gate B will be one of these three. Okay guys, I hope this video has been helpful, thank you very much for watching, and take care.